Are you going to, what are you, with the old man aside? Well, I mean, you, 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 this race. Oh, okay. All right, okay, Nick. All right, everybody. All right, I'm Bill Grant. <laughs> and here's the stump. And okay, I'm Mr. America, Mr. Oh, World. No. You gave it, hold that stump up, I want them to see, cut the pieces. You want, you want them to see this stump, Leroy? Yeah, that's now, like, you know, it took a long time to get this stump. Uh -huh. You know, back in the day, when I first started. You know, I mean, I started when I was a real kid, you know, but I really got some good motivation and, you know, inspiration from you. I mean, I, I po picked up that Ebony mag magazine. For most people who don't know what Ebony magazine is, is Ebony magazine back in the day was a black magazine. And... Uh, you know, I never thought they would put a bodybuilder in there, but I opened up the pages one day, and who did I see? Leroy Colbert, a whole article about Leroy. He's sitting there, he's, and I love him. I wanted big arms all the time. So Leroy was sitting there with somebody, Tom Sansone, pushing down on his knees, and Leroy's curling. I said, oh, shit, those are the arms I need. I mean, it really gave me motivation. I mean, I kept training and training. Matter of fact, I took that magazine to everybody to show it to them. That's Leroy Colbert, man. Look at that shit. Look at that guy's arm. You know, that man. was a mainstream magazine. That wasn't a bodybuilding magazine. No, they knew you from all over yeah, the country. Yeah, yeah, I know. Guys who guys had told me that there was an army that was stationed in Indonesia, you know, they saw that. Yeah. You know, and I said, ooh, yeah. started feeling important. You were internationally <laughs> famous, man. I'm telling you, man. Leroy was great. I mean, he was a great inspiration. I mean, I was a skinny little kid. I mean, and looking at a guy like that, with arms like that, and you got to understand, back in the day, and I got to put this out there, this guy was drug free. He didn't take anything. He didn't well, take let me any stuff. Take. You know why? Because it wasn't around to take. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm telling you, you look, look at the photos. Maybe later on we can pan to the photos of Leroy and show a photo of Leroy Colbert's body. This guy was fantastic, man. I mean, he can in, in, he can ins inspire Jesus, man. Ah, to to train, oh, man. man. I mean, that. look at the, the little tiny waist, the flaring lats, the big bison, the big stumps, man, you know? And it was great. I mean, well, you see, I never was blessed to get that kind of definition. That's unbelievable. Because, see, we were for, for size. You know, we were, we were those guys, the bigger you get, the better, you know, in those days. We didn't, do, we didn't look for the cuts like, you know, when I first saw you, Jesus Christ, I looked, I said, Jesus. And you know what's funny? When you're coming up and you don't see bodies like you, because, you know, we didn't use any, we didn't right. know anything about the uh, steroids, you know, yeah. anything. We didn't know anything. All we knew was, where are these guys coming from? But like the, but you knew that wherever they're coming from, they're bodybuilders. Right. We and you're proper guys. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and you connect, you know. When I first met you, it was like I knew you all along. I, that's the whole deal. You know, yeah. that, that, it was like, man, hey, how you doing? You know what we, how you doing, builder? Right? We never met each other. Unbelievable. And you got to understand one thing. Is unbelievable. But the thing is, is when I won the Mr. World, Leroy, you were one of the judges. Yeah. You was one of the judges. I mean, you had you, um, King on Voyages. Um, no, there was a couple of, who else was there with the judges there? Well, these are old, these old time <laughs> Right. Guys. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, is. But now, see, what do you think? For me, though? I like to have judges that actually accomplish something in bodybuilding. I mean, these guys were all top bodybuilders. I mean, they trained hard, they competed. I mean, these were guys worthy of being judges. I mean, they really knew what to look for. And I'd never forget that night, man. But what do you think, uh, Bill, is the main difference in the old days and when you were coming? What did you find the difference? Of course, we had very rudimentary uh, training. We didn't have the flat machines. Right, 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 right. Solid yeah. dumbbells and barbells we were using. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much. It's really ancient. Yeah. But what do you find the, the basic, the dramatic difference between the old timers and your, your, your crew? Because you know, you know old timer now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, you had to bring and, that up. And right? you know, it's a funny thing. What's really funny is that when I was coming up, when I, when I, when you came up, I thought you were the young buck. And now you got the young bucks over there. Exactly. I never dreamed that exactly. you would be an old timer. Yeah, I, I, I didn't now. You catch it up? No. You catch it up? I already caught up. <laughs> I, but, I remember those with the, with the antiquated equipment. Mm -hmm. I see, I trained at the Orange YMCA in Jersey. And I mean, it was like, a, it was dumpy like the gyms you guys went to. See, we, we didn't have the luxury of having air conditioning in a gym, all the pulley machines. These guys are this spoiled today, man. man. Yeah. I mean, in the summertime, when I trained at the Orange YMCA, it was down in the basement. There was one little slit window on one side and an exhaust what, sand. What, what year was that you started? Now, I actually picked up my first weights in 1956. 
I was nine years old. And my parents said, don't you think you're a little bit young to be training? You started yeah, making You know what's so... What? You, you were already training in 1950. Oh, no, I started in the 40s. I started 65 years ago. 66 years I can't, ago. I can't so what, what was that? What, I can't count that high. That, that's what I started. <laughs> See, and so the point is, when I, when, when I was training, they didn't have to, to, people look at you like something was wrong with you. Yeah, oh yeah. They <laughs> see, you know, right? Oh you know, yeah. You know. Oh, and the thing is, is, you know, it was hard to go to the store and buy a magazine. Buy a bodybuilding mag, looking at guys in trunks with oil on their bodies. So Whoa! <laughs> but you see, but now remember now, uh, what makes it so funny. Now, you've got up there a few, a few years now, so I can relate to you more now than before. Yeah, it's amazing. Because you, you in the age where you begin to feel father time, even with the stuff. That's right. You know? <laughs> you see, at that one time, you were so much younger than me, and that, and like, like, let me see, I'm 16 years younger than you, right? Yeah. Yeah, so when you... Well, when I'm only 39 now. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> you see that? And you know what? As long as you think that, you'll be 39. That's right. And you know another You're thing? You're only as old as you think you are. And you know another thing, Bill? You know what's funny? How we don't age here. No. We're still fired up, you know? That's it. We got that. You know, I tell you one thing. I wish my body was with my brain. I feel, man. It's unbelievable, man. It's, like, <laughs> you know what it's I mean? like a log throwing it into the fire. And it yeah. explodes, yeah. man. It's cinders, man. It becomes fire. It becomes hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It, it was good those days. I mean, the training techniques. I mean, you know, they keep trying to fix the wheel. Say like the arm. Big word. Say like the arms. What did you do for the arms? Honestly, well, the arms. You oh, that, say. Well, for arms, I, I kind of like followed your arm routine mm -hmm. when it was in the magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, dumbbell curls. We did supersets, barbell curls. Remember, we didn't have all the fancy machines. We just had barbells and real dumbbells. When did they come with the fancy machines? What year was it? It's hard to remember. Jeez, it was probably at least 15, 10, 15 years after I started. In the 70s, it's late 60s and 70s started coming. They got the machines coming in and the techniques. And we, but we had the supplements too back in the day. And well, no, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I tell you, what did this? You started training. Uh, what year? I, I got serious in 1960. 56, I picked up my my first weights. But that was <clears throat> what happened was is I was looking at the magazine, you know, the, the, the comic books. You know, you had Charles Atlas in the back. And I used to get beat up all the time. You didn't realize, I never told you that story, right? Mm. I mean, I used to get beat up by the girls on the block. One girl used to ch chase me up a tree one time. Well, you wanted, you didn't have no body, you didn't have any muscles then. I was four foot nine, 110 pounds. My oh. sisters had to fight for me. And the big guy around the so corner had got to you up interested in lifting iron? That was the reason. I was so skinny. My father was a professional fighter and he was ranked number three in the world as a light heavyweight back mm. in, the, in the 40s. And I mean, I couldn't protect myself. I mean, lifting weights was the only way I could go. And I wanted to look good. I looked at those pictures, man. It was like, wow. I saw Charles Atlas, and that was great. And Charles Atlas wasn't, he was built, but he didn't look like none of the guys. So now the basic day. thing now, because when I was training, we had to go to, we had to go like, uh, try things to see if it worked. Because when nobody, well, nobody around telling you anything. Yeah, we, we so were when you started, models. yeah, when you started, and you wanted to build your arms, what did you do? I mean, what was your, did you have any kind of a goal, method, or you just went and, you know, what, you had a method of training? Well, basically just the method of all the guys in the magazine, like yourself. I, I would do your whole arm routine all the way through. I used to train six hours a day, three days a week. Six and hours. what was your diet then? Spaghetti and meatballs, <laughs> oatmeal, peanut what butter, you eat, and what? jelly sandwich. But I had a very fast metabolism. But did you ever notice, though, when you train like that, you eat anything? Oh, yeah. But then again... When the shows back then, you know, guys really didn't know how to diet. They went on zero, zero carbs. And I remember guys almost passing out on the stage, and they used to hate me because I'd be eating spaghetti and peanut butter and They didn't understand the body. I still was ripped. But you see, Bill, they didn't understand the body. You've got to have carbs. you you got to. Because that's what the body uses. It's the first requirement of the body is right. energy. You, can't, you can't go no carbs at all. No. you got to have some carbs. Yeah. But these guys, that, that was the thought. That was the thought process. But, but I mean... <clears throat> that was the way most guys were training at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, do you see any involvement before you got it? When did you more or less ease out of competition? Well, let's see. My, my, la my last show <clears throat> was 1997. That was the Masters Olympia. But I would say probably 1980-something, 89 around there, I was starting to phase myself out. <clears throat> but, I mean, 
But nope. did you see any difference in the bodies in the method of training? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That? Yes, okay. Let's get to that. <clears throat> the training was a little different back then because I think we trained harder. We didn't because have, you could train like, harder. We, we, we trained harder. Because the juice. Yeah. The guys today also, I think, the bodies are different. We, we could really distinguish who was who in a bodybuilding show. I mean, like, at one point when Arnold had the Olympia <clears throat> at, uh, in Columbus, he had a, a, a screen. You know, where you could see a silhouette screen. Mm -hmm. And each guy would come out and they would do their favorite pose, and the audience would have to guess who it was. Well, everybody guessed everybody because we all had a signature pose, but we all had a different type of physique. Today, Not today. The guys, they're almost like cookie cutters. They all look alike. You got to look good because yeah. of the juice. Well, I, you know, I again, like I always say, it's not a knock on any of the guys of today. No, I agree. I just think it, if the bodybuilding is really going to survive, we've got to do something different. I think the average guy, when he looks at a bodybuilder today, and it's the Rejection. truth, they look at it and he says, how many drugs do I have to take? No, to they reject like it. They reject That's it. Saying, they don't want to look like that. And women sometimes are appalled. I mean, even back in the day when we had a little muscle, like, oh, look, what is that? So, I mean, if we really want to get back get back into the mainstream, I think we're going to have to kind of scale back, and we're going to have to but look. But you see, they're not going to do it. No, I know.